difference in this world, God. And because of you, Lord, you're going to use us to, Lord, reach people, God. Thank you. Is it true today that when people pray, cloudless skies will break, kings and queens will shake? Yes, it's true.
mystery makers in this world, Lord, that we can follow you and trust in you, Lord. I thank you that you never fail, that everything you do is good. them into plans. See, a lot of people just got dreams. You got to take those dreams and put some acts to them. Trust him and see, guess what? He's got all the power you need for any of your circumstances in Jesus' name. I'm sorry if I interrupted the re-kick up there, but 
I like that. I got dreams, turned them into plans. What do you think about that?
change, God. You are good and you never change, God. You are good and you never change your ways. You are good and you never change, God. You are good and you never change, God. You are good and you never change. struggling let me tell you something I've been in this long enough to know that God's good and though your circumstances may look dark God's good and you can trust him you hear me you can trust him so Melanie if you would I want you to go back 
to verse 1. We're going to sing it a song or two, and then we'll work our way on it. Amen. Even in the night, even in the wild, okay? Even in the wild, in the middle of the night, I say that you are good. And though my prayers are heard, the response is yours, God. been there where you don't know which way to turn what to say what to do who to cry out to who's the right person to cry out to you know and somebody's here going through that and I want you to know I might not say the right things but God does and God can and he will for you in Jesus name amen why don't you give the Lord a big hand clap of praise if you believe that come on I am blessed as a pastor uh, to pastor a church like this. Uh, let me tell you why. Sitting in this church right now are people with some major issues. Not major issues, major hurt. I'm, I'm thinking about a young man that's sitting here right now. He lost his son a few years back, and every time around this time of the year, his heart broke. We got people in here that family members are, are ill. And I'm, I'm grateful that we have a church that are not so impatient that we want to ease on quickly through things 
and we might pause for a moment and then just allow the Spirit of God to minister to people through the music and stuff. That's important. And the way that happens is if you all as a congregation, people can sense that. And when you sense, you know, in the scriptures it says they begin the stirring of the waters at the pool of Bethesda. When the stirring of the waters begin to take place, whoever got off into the pool would be healed. And sometimes when the Spirit of God begins to stir the congregation, move the congregation, when we learn to react to that, and you get involved in that, it may be something that you just begin to pray underneath your breath, begin to pray in the Spirit and that type of thing. You never know what God can do to somebody's heart. And it just as you get in sync with what the Holy Spirit wants to do in people's life. Now, I know people have gotten kooky and crazy in the past, uh, you know, but hey, the Holy Spirit of God still can do a mighty work when we will learn to just get tuned in Him and let Him do a mighty work. Yes, ma'am? By the way, she's been out in children's church for a lot, but this is my beautiful wife here. Yes. One thing I was thinking whenever we were singing those songs today is... You know, that song may seem repetitive. You're good and you never change your ways. God, you're good and you never change your ways. And um, when you are in your darkest hour, if you'll listen, if you'll just lean in to the Holy Spirit, He'll be saying something similar to that. He'll be saying something. And if you will grab hold of what you're hearing in your spirit that is God, you will have the supernatural power to make it through any situation that you're going through at that time it could be just that one little phrase when Haley was in the hospital I had one one little phrase that kept coming to me bringing me peace and it was just um you've never let me down God you've never let me down and I just remember hanging on to that and so it could be just one phrase in a song abandon yourself in praise and worship let the songs that we sing on Sunday morning go deep in your heart because you never know. Your darkest hour may be right around the corner. And you want to lean in to the Holy Spirit and Amen. hear what he has I to say. I believe 100%. Amen. So thank you for being an awesome congregation of people. Amen. Thank you all so much for just doing your part as we come together and worship and bless the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I was the one asking why. In July, I got real sick. Um, I didn't know what was going on. Then my daddy died in August, and I thought I had the shingles. I was broke out all the way around, all around my chest and my mouth. Everything went, we were busy, so, you know, I don't go to the doctor. So then daddy passed away in August, and I got sicker and sicker and sicker. So I went to the doctor Monday, and they did blood work, and they told me that I had uh, possibly RSV and lupus. And that they was going to treat me no sooner my blood work got back. Well, the whole time I've been saying, why me, Lord? Why am I dealing with this? I know this is nerves. I know this is my daddy. I know I'm not sick, but I know I serve a guy that can heal me. So I just kept saying, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. The rash is still there. I, I couldn't close my hands. I couldn't hold a comb to cut hair. It's been going on for three months. So I called Brandy when I got my blood work done. And I said, I need you to pray that God's going to heal me. I said, I believe he's already healed me. Now, I still have all these symptoms, and I still have this rash, but I know God's going to heal me. I got the blood work back. Thirsty. There's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. All right, if we could have the ushers come and prepare to receive your giving unto the Lord. Amen. We pray that you're blessed. Y'all just always remember your giving. We got a lot of plans that I'm trying to put together now and different things I'm trying to put together. And like I said, it just takes money. Amen. It just takes money to do I, I used to not like talking about money, still don't. But you know what? The world kind of revolves around money. Amen. And guess who has it? Y'all have it. I, and I have it with y'all. Amen. So we will pray the Lord will bless it abundantly. Thank you for watching our live stream from Hosanna Family Worship Center. We hope our broadcast is a blessing to you. But did you know you could give to this ministry using your smartphone? We call it Text to Give. It's fast, safe, and secure. Simply text your offering of any amount to 662-318-3051. Hosanna will text you a receipt acknowledging your tax-deductible gift. Thank you in advance for your support. We now turn you back to our service. 
All righty, I am, I, I am blessed to be able to do a baby dedication here this morning. And I'm doubly blessed to another granddaughter that I have in here in the whole family. Could the family at all come up for Miss Callie Jo? She's a small little baby. I don't know. Little baby, I don't know how to. Y'all come on up, Haley. And this is Nate's uh, uh, mother and father. And everybody, just see right quick. Who is this right here? Tell them what your name is. <laughs> Tell them what your name is. Gracie. Gracie. All right. Tell them what your name is. <laughs> Tell them what their name is. I'm Paul. I'm Paul Paul. There you go. I'm Paul Paul. All righty. It's good to have you. All my grandchildren up here. Well, man, this is Callie Joe. She's so small. Look at that. Good, and I don't even mind, and she stays balled up the whole time, so I don't know how to hold her, you know. Look at that, amen, praise God. Great having you two here with us, great in-laws, amen, to be blessed with. All righty, y'all heard me say this time and time again, so we're going to go after the end. Children are a gift from God, amen. Uh, Psalms, uh, Psalms 127.3 says, children are a heritage from the Lord, and children are a reward from him. I think if we really understood that we would take more priority in raising our children. You know what I'm saying? The children are a gift from God. As believers, we are called to recognize that children belong first and foremost to God. God in his goodness gives children as a gift to parents. They not only have the awesome responsibility of caring for them, of caring for this gift, but also the wonderful privilege of enjoying the gift. Because children belong to God and are given by graces as gifts to the parents, it's only proper and appropriate that children be dedicated back to God. We're told in 1 Samuel that Hannah presented her son Samuel to the Lord. Also in Luke 2.22, we read that... Luke 22:22, we read that Mary and Joseph brought Jesus uh, to the temple in Jerusalem in order to present him before the Lord. In the same way, these parents today bring Callie Joe, uh, presenting first themselves and then their children before the Lord their God. Nate and Haley, and we've done this three times, and maybe we'll do it some more, all righty. <laughs> when you're married to a doctor, you can have a lot of children, amen. <laughs> Get it, get it done, huh? all right. <laughs> Haley said, let's nip in the bud right here, all right now. Uh, Haley, Nate and Haley, I call your attention to the commands that God recorded in Scripture. Deuteronomy 6, 4, 7 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commands that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them upon your children. Talk to him when you go to the ball field. Talk to him when you go to the volleyball court. Talk to him when you go into McDonald's because we're too busy to cook supper. You know what I'm saying? It's to, it's, the key to raising children is talk to them, to communicate with them, work with them through everyday areas of life. Look, it says, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Father, do not provoke your children to wrath. Instead, bring them up in training and instructions of the Lord as in God's plans. Parents, love God with all, every ounce of energy and teach them to do the same. And as you love God and you love one another, I can say this that I've tried to do, me and Brandy have tried through the years, is to love each other in front of you all and to love God in front of you all. And that's something very important for you to do. So with that said, Nate and Haley, by coming forward before God and his people, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves to Cali Joe, to the Lord? If so, please respond by saying we do. Having come freely, I now ask you to enter into the following commitment in the presence of God and his people so that they may walk in an abundance of life that Christ offers. Do you pledge by God's help and in partnership with the church to provide them with a Christian home of love and peace to raise, him, to raise her in the truth of the Lord's instruction and discipline and to encourage her to one day trust Jesus as Savior and Lord. For encouragement to fulfill these, pa uh, uh, these vows, parents call upon their grandparents. Proverbs seventeen six says this, 
grandchildren are the crown of the age. There's a great pride in seeing another generation of family and uh, uh, coming forth here. So to this end, I will ask the following questions to the grandparents. Do you declare your desire? Bust, bust. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. What are you doing? He, 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 that's dangerous putting Duke down. I can tell you right now. They say he looks a little bit like me, though. I don't know. It's, it might be shaped a little like me. I don't know. If I, uh, let's see here. Uh, to this end, I will ask the grandparents the following uh, question. Do you hereby declare your desire and dedicate yourself to Cali Joe, to the Lord? If so, respond by saying we do. We do. Finally, I ask the friends in the church, and that be you all, amen? I ask the friends in the church to make a vow as well. There's an old proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. Parents have the first responsibility, but parents need help and support of that community. So I direct my questions now to the church. By being present in God's house today, do you hereby declare yourself to be children of God because you trust Jesus Christ alone for forgiveness of sin and the gift of eternal life? If this is true, please respond by saying, we do. All righty. Hey, boy, where are you going? Could you imagine raising three? Oh, my Lord. I'd be like, when they all come to my house, I'm like, oh, my God. What are we going to do here? Here, let me have Callie Joe right quick. Miss Brandy, could you? This is Callie Joe. Look at it right quick. Huh? Huh? Get that oil right quick. Huh? Could I have some of the elders of the church? Why don't you come up and help me pray for them right quick? Just a little bit. Let's pray for her real quick. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that all the days of her life she will have health, prosperity, and peace rule and reign in her life. Lord, you know the secret plans that you have for her, the secret desires you have for her. And so we pray that the parents, the grandparents, and even the church will help guide her and direct her in all the days of her life. Let health and, again, prosperity rule and reign. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Won't y'all give them a big hand clap? All righty. And before y'all go, we have a little, there you go. Callie Joe, we have a little small gift that we want to give. Hillary, you want to explain this or do they already know? No. Are they going to do it here? Look, Gracie. All righty. Hey. All right, hey. So, how much breakfast inside the jar is 936 beats? Okay, 936 represents. What, guys? What does it represent? How many weeks? Yes, how many weeks from birth until their 18th birthday, which is their senior year? Can someone get control of that? I got them. <laughs> anyway, so um, the purpose of this is to help you understand that every week counts. Help, uh, help us to have a strategy when we're parenting that, hey, j this week, even though it felt like everything was falling apart, it, we did it for a purpose. And so... Um, how, you take one beat out each week, and there you go. Mm -hmm. And here's this. <laughs> Good job. Love y'all. Love you, bro. Get them back in the children's church. Huh? All righty. Lock them down. Get the security. Do we have announcements? Yeah, lock them down and get the security. Hey, boy, come on. Y'all know. Oh, come on, buddy. You know, Buster was my, my daddy's name. How about that? On Wednesday, October the 10th, Hosanna's Celebrate Recovery Ministry will be hosting a Festival for Life. This will be a multimedia event to help share the biblical message that we, the church, need to support our local pregnancy centers and stand up for life. The event is sponsored by Urban Family Communications and the American Family Association. So you don't want to miss it. That's Wednesday, October the 10th at 6.30 p.m.
A few days later, on Saturday, October the 13th, our worship team will be opening up for the Quitman County Mules and Blues Festival in March. We have been chosen to kick off the gospel music part of their program, so we'd like to have a good showing by the people of Hosanna. There will be good Christian music all morning, plus plenty to eat as well as arts and crafts to see. And if you would like to participate in their 4K run or would like to set up a booth, application forms can be found in the Visitor and Information Center. That's the Mules and Blues Festival, March, Mississippi, 11 o'clock on Saturday, October the 13th. That's all of our announcements for this week, so we now return you to our Sunday service. Awesome, awesome. How many first-time visitors we got here this morning? Any first-time visitors? There's one right here. There's another one, two more back there. Awesome. If you would, they, they, there you go. They're bringing you just a little small gift if you haven't already seen one, Willie. There's one up here in the front, too. Uh, and I think they'll be getting it to you. We just want to say thank you for coming. And if for some reason we don't get it to you before you leave here, just go to the information center up here in the front, up here on the second row, Mr. Willie. That Willie's sharp cookie, don't he? He keeps me straight around here. You know, Willie has been bringing me a sausage and biscuit, I know, for probably four or five years every Sunday out of his own pocket. And the, and the, and the church, different people on the platform, and I want to say thank you, brother. Member, thank visitors, thank you so much. We trust that you uh, sense the presence of the Lord here in the service. Amen. Uh, pretty awesome. Uh, to, I'm, I'm continuing the series, Winning with People. How many know it's pretty tough to win with people? And when you begin to lose with people, you have a tendency to want to stick behind your four walls of your house or stay away from everybody. And that is the most dangerous thing you can do. Do you know that the lack of touch and love can actually make your spine turn? That's why we do a lot of hugging around here. A lot of, I don't like to hug. Well, get over it. Just, just you'll make it. Because lack of somebody giving you a hug, lack of saying I love you, lack of responding to each other like that can actually cause sickness in our body. And we don't want to do that. So I want us to learn to win with people, not only in our marriage relationships, but learn to win with people out there in the world. Because we're Christians. We, we have something to share with them. We have something to say to them. We should. And so if we're going to do that, we've got to learn to win with people. And when you win with people, you've got to do crazy stuff like loving your enemy. That's what it means you Democrats got to love Republicans. You Republicans got to love Democrats. You know what I'm saying? As Christians, Christianity is our number one issue. What you are politically and what you are uh, financially or culturally, that don't matter to me a hill of beans. What matters the most is that we are born again children of God. And that should be our story. And that's what D's sticking to. I'm not going to get into a debate with you over all that stuff. Number one thing is we should be uh, Christians and we should learn to be able to navigate our way through dealing with people. And I can honestly say I haven't always done a great job in doing that. But the older I get, the more I desire to do that. Amen. Uh, so the title of my message is Winning with People. But my subtext on there would be, how much love do you have? How much love do you have? And we're going to talk about that a little bit further on in my message. But my question to you is, how much love do you have? There's four different Greek words in the New Testament for love. And I want to run over them a little bit, give a small description of them. And then we're going to enter into some Texas and see if we can't find out some stuff, okay? The first Greek word, remember, just let me say this right here. Remember, the Bible was written originally in Hebrew, okay? And then they translated it into Greek called the Septuagint, okay, to Greek. And then the New Testament was written in what we call Koine Greek, which means everyday Greek language, all righty. And so Hebrew translated into Greek. Then the New Testament, when Jesus come onto the scene, he could have kept speaking Hebrew, but he spoke uh, also an Aramaic or Greek because that's the, that was the people that he was associated and involved with, okay? Uh, and so we got Greek. So we want to look at what the different words for love is in the Greek where we can get on into the uh, text of passage. The next, and I don't pronounce these words great. I barely have a hard, I have a hard time pronouncing English words right. So I'm going to just pronounce this, try to pronounce this Greek word. You got me? Y'all with me? All righty. 
Okay, the first one is what we call stergo, sterge or stergo, okay, however you want to pronounce it. It means love that we have for those in our families. I love you because you are my brother or my sister, okay? That's the love that we should have in the family unit. I love you based upon this. The next one is where we get the word erotic or arios, okay? You teenagers should not even know how to say this word, all right? Uh, but the arios is, is where we get the word erotic from. I love you because you give me pleasure. Okay? To be honest with you, 99% of you fell in love with your wife or your whatever husband based upon this definition. I mean, that ain't necessarily a bad thing. I hope you desire your mate. You know what I'm saying? I hope when you're there is a, a certain form of that. So, arios is the word we get, okay? It's where we get the word erotic. And I love you because you give me pleasure. If you stop giving me pleasure, I stop loving you. In other words, that is, I want to be pleased 100% of the time. I don't care if you're pleased or not. Just please me. And it's where we get the word erotic love at. And let's don't get so high, high, uh, pious in here. Y'all know that goes on within marriages. Let somebody withhold something for a little while, mainly when you were younger, and see how mad that love is. How much agape is flowing out of you. We have a tendency to get mainly men children. You know what I'm saying? We're like, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, you know, all that. And so this particular word here is where we get is arios, or it's erotic love. And it is, again, I want to be pleased. I really don't care about you. I want to be pleased. Now, y'all remember that. 100% me, uh, I just need to be pleased. And that's what that definition there means. Uh, it is erotic love. The next particular word is where we get the Greek word uh, uh, Philadelphia or phileo, which means a brotherly kindness, uh, uh, translated as friend or brotherly kindness. I, I like you because you're my friend. And if you don't give me uh, give in return, conflict will arise and our relationship would end. How many know that's how the world treats each other? I know back in the world when I was partying, uh, man, as long as you had the money to keep the party going, everybody liked you. As soon as that money was over with, they didn't like you. And that's, okay, so if you don't even party, that's how it is. As long as uh, this phileo love is, as long as everything's going good between me and you, I'm going to love you. But just as soon as that relation stops or we don't like each other more I'm going to pick my stuff up and go to another church you know what I'm saying or go or go hang around somebody else and that is a 50-50 love okay where uh, where Arios is I want to be pleased 100% uh, this particular love phileo means I'm going to love you as long as you love me and that is what's going on in our society in our world we can't have difference of opinion because if we have difference of opinion we struggle but God God ain't like that and that's where we get the next word agape agape love is a different it's a it's a it's a love that God births in us when we become born again when we become born again God births this type of love within us which is this is a total selfless love love that is rooted in God Sacrifice is the fun, fundamental attribute. It responds to someone's need with no strings attached. All other words we used are before this one is an emotional thing. I love you if you love me. I love you if you give me what I want. Arios. This particular love says, I'm going to give you 100% whether you give me none back or not. And that is a love that you can't do on your own. That is the love that takes the power of the Holy Spirit to work within you. And it's representative by choice. See, agape is where I make a choice to love you even though you're not loving me back. I make a choice to still treat you with kindness. I make a choice to still treat you right, even though you're treating me wrong or doing me wrong. I don't necessarily got to hang around you. I ain't necessarily going to be your best bud because I'm not a doormat. But on the flip side, I'm going to choose to love you and not hold bitterness against you or anything else. It's a choice I make today. I make a choice to love you. And that is the type of love that God has called us as Christians to do. Now, know this. It's that when I talk about these topics... 
because we have such a diverse group of people that come to this church, I got to qualify myself a lot. I talked about love last week and somebody that uh, attends this church that has been being physically abused. I had to meet with them later because they're saying, should I go back to my husband because he, and, and show him love and he's abusing me? No, you don't have to do that. You love them, but you can get away from them if there's a physical abuse. You don't love this, this selfless love has to do with people, what God's kind of loving. If you're not loving, loving in God ways towards an individual or they're not loving you and God ways towards you, you don't have to stay there and be a doormat. You got what I'm saying? You don't have to stay there and get abused, okay? So based upon these different words here, God uses the word love, but what's another word that we use for love in the New Testament? Huh? Charity. So why would love be charity? It's given. It's 100% whether you give me anything back or not. So when your husband's giving you charity... Even though he really don't want to, but he's giving you some charity. Don't get so mad at him. Y'all didn't, y'all didn't get that. Yeah, y'all didn't get that already. I can tell already. Not, uh, but to be honest with you, I don't know about you, but I don't know if I can love everybody agape. I can love my children agape and my wife agape. And maybe some of my close friends. But I don't know if I have that ability within myself to give that agape love. That 100% love to you even though you don't love me back. I don't know if I can do that. I'm just being, I don't, and I know I can't do it all the time. But thank God that he gives us the strength to do it. I, I, I could see myself filet on you. I could see myself loving you as you love me. You know what I'm talking about. I, I, if me, me and you good and you taking care of me and I'm taking care of you and we're being nice, I can see me loving people like that. But if I'm trying to love you and you smacking me around, not physically, but telling me I'm something or you don't like me or you don't like my bald head or you don't like this or that, I would have a hard time being truthful. I would have a hard time showing that type of love towards you. But let's look again. Jesus says this. Let's look what he says. Matthew 5, 43 through 45 says this. You have heard, it, heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But look what he says. This is what Jesus is saying. But I say to you, love your enemies and bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Now look at me. This ain't Brother D's word. This is what Jesus says. And he wasn't using the word phileo there. And he wasn't using the word uh, areos there. He was using the word agape. Jesus is looking. He turns to us and said, let me tell you what I want you to do. I want you to learn to give 100% to people whether they give anything back to us or not. That's pretty difficult, ain't it? That would be kind of hard, huh? You know, we're pretty much country folks in the South. You smack me, I'm probably going to smack you back. You know what I'm saying? But that is not the way God wants us to learn to love each other. In fact, if you smack me, I'm going to have to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm just being honest, huh? I've been around enough of you. I've been around enough of y'all. I know how y'all act and think too. Just let mess with one of your children and see how much agape flows out of you. I tell you what, even on Facebook, somebody makes a hint that you perceive somebody saying about your child. You're ready to blow Facebook smack out, Twitter it out, and tell everybody else. Send a mean snapshot. Whatever that is, I've really never done a snapshot, but I hear that's the new thing. Snapchat, Snapchat shot. Say, I told you. How many folks over 50 have a Snapchat? You ain't over 50, are you? See, that's old folks. We don't even know what Snapchat is, huh? Look at John 13, 34 through 35 says. Look at it says. A new commandment I give you. That you love one another as I have loved you. That you also love one another. By this all men. Excuse me. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. 
Look at he's saying here. If you love one another, I'm going to give you 100% whether you give anything back. Then everybody around is going to know that you are a Christian. And when you refuse to do that stuff to one another, then people are having questions or doubting their minds if you love God. Because he said, how can you love God and have hate in your hearts? Don't you know hate in your hearts is like murdering somebody? By the way, loving somebody don't mean you necessarily forget what was done. Or you're not going to get yourself put back in that same situation. That's just saying, I'm going to choose to love you and treat you with kindness in spite of the fact. And then Jesus says another passage here that really gets confusing. John chapter 5, verse 42, through, uh, verse 42 says, But I know you, that you do not have the love of God in you. I'll be honest with you. Outside of the Holy Spirit of God living within me, I don't have the love of God in me. And we're surprised that this generation... That will take a gun out and blow you slap away. Without the love of God in them, they will not be able to constrain themselves. And the reason why so many young people and so many people in this generation does not understand the love of God because they have not seen it demonstrated in front of them. They haven't seen it demonstrated in their homes. They haven't seen it demonstrated in the church. They haven't seen it demonstrated by those people that call themselves Christians. Christians are supposed to have the ability to give you 100% whether you give me back it or not. And if you would be honest with you, you're right there with Jesus saying, I don't know if I can love like that. And when you can come to that place in your life, when you recognize, I don't know if I can love like that, then you are at a place of recognizing that God can give you the ability to love somebody even though they don't deserve it. Now let's keep on going. How do you love when you do not have the love of God in you? Let's look at 1 Peter 1, 2, 20, uh, uh, verse 22. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, 22. This was their answer. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren. Look what he said, purifying your souls. What does that mean? When you become a born again child of God. God wants to take your belief systems, your emotions, and God wants to purify them and help you begin to have compassion on people, learn to teach you how to love people. So God, in every circumstance, wants to begin to purify your mind, will, and emotion, begin to let you learn to not trust in yourself, but trust in the Holy Spirit. The good news is this. There are times in your life when you're going to run into situations that you don't think that you can handle on your own. It is going to be on your ability to be able to deal with it. When you get to that place, thank God there's a special grace that the Holy Spirit gives. He, in our heart and our mind, He drops down and gives you the ability to handle a situation that before you got saved, you would not have been able to do it. Before you got saved, you would have took somebody's head off. Thank God for the Holy Spirit of God that comes in and gives us a special grace in our time of need. Let's look at it right here. Said, Look at it. says. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit and sincere love, agape love, and love for one another fervently with a pure heart. What God does, He comes in and gives you a heart and a willingness to love people in spite of the situation. And that's what we need in Mississippi. Too much time we, we judge people based upon their skin colors and based upon the situation instead of the heart of the person that lives with inside them. And we got to learn to begin to look at that rather than the ethical, and re, not ethical, the ethnic or the, the cultural boundaries we have. We got to begin to let, let us learn to love each other the way God's love has. Even that joker that does us wrong, we got to learn to love them. Give them 100%. Having been born again, look at this. 
not of a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible seed through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. See, I become born again. The Word of God lives within me. And when I get ready to retaliate, God's Word comes in, confronts my mind, will, and emotion, and helps me to love somebody that I couldn't love on my own. And that's what we got to deal with when we're dealing with people. Well, again, how much love do you have then? How much love do you have? The thing that I've seen, this is what I've seen through the years in marriages. This is what I've seen with families. Imagine if I had, there's a bunch of batteries, but imagine with me, this was, this was 100, okay? Okay? And so, I have a hundred loves. Imagine, I got a hundred loves. The difficulty is with most Christians, they, they think they only have a hundred loves. And when they've gotten rid of 50, they only got 50 left. With Christianity, God keeps filling the pot up. See, you think if I give this much love away to this person, then I only got this much love left for somebody else. God gives us the ability. He keeps pouring in that love that we can't give on our own. And so when people begin to think they only have so much love, some people hoard their pieces of love for those that are closest to them. Let me read that again. People who think they only have... 100 pieces of love have a tendency to hoard their pieces for those that are close to them because they might run out. They focus on the my four and no more. It's a jealous love. It's, 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 it's a jealous love because if I give this person this amount of love, and they don't react the way I think they are to, then I think I just wasted that love. It's an insecure love because I'm going to hoard this love because I have such a desire and such a need for somebody to love me that I try a little bit on you, but if it don't work, now I'm down to only 50 bits of love. So what we begin to do, we begin to hoard that love to ourselves and only spend it upon our children. The difficulty with that is one day our children get a little older and guess what? They, you stop being their hero in life and they stop showing you the love that they used to love. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of how it was with my girls. All of a sudden one day I was superhero with my daughters and then the next day here come these old punk boys coming into my house and all of a sudden I wasn't the strongest person anymore, all righty? And my love running out you know what I'm saying and all that business so all of a sudden when you try to hoard your love and spend it on my four and no more if you begin to be insecure you begin to be jealous and guess what even the folks you think loved you the most begins to find love with somebody else they hoard their love up they focus on my four and no more people who only have think that they only have a hundred bits of love, regulate their love. They regulate their pieces because everything must be fair. Parents, let me tell you something. Life is not fair. You had children that reach the age of driver's license, and guess what? You got to learn to let them go, and you got to tell little Binky, who's used to hanging around Buffy, you got to tell him, you got to stay home today because Binky's going out on her own today. So you make the oldest one stay at home until everybody gets old enough. You know, it ain't like that in life. So what we do, sometimes you got to tell your little one, you got to stay at home today, and me and you going to eat pancakes because they're going out. Life ain't fair. 
You hear me? Love ain't necessarily always fair. And look at me. What happens is we get ourselves and we begin to try to regulate our love. So in other words, it's kind of like this. If I got 100 pieces of love, then there's four of us. So I can give you 25% and I can give you 25% and I can give you 25%. How many percents I'm at right now? I'm at 75. And so I can give you 25%. So I've done give all my pieces of love out. But what if somebody else comes into the picture? I don't have any more love to give out. So we try, to, we try to limit that, and we try to do that. And God don't want us to regulate our love. God can give you the ability to love you 100% and turn around and love you 100% and love you 100% and love you 100%. And guess what? I still have enough love within me to love you 100%. We don't have to regulate the love of God because it's abundant. And so some people hoard and some people try to regulate their love. So if I have three people in my family, I can give 30%, 33% of my love. I've seen some of your brain thinking, yes, 33%. <laughs> if there's two of us in the family, young people, how much love can we give them? Huh? If you got one person in the family, how much love can you give that person? Y'all better be able to get that, Lord, have mercy. So, so look at me. Listen, some people. I thought she lived in a shoe. And that was the next point I was fixing to say. Some, not, not like that, but a different point. Good job. Next point is sometimes more people are more needier. You know that? Honestly. Some kids are born with different temperaments, and they need a little bit more. Some kids like, get away from me. I don't need it. But some kids need that little bit more needier. And, you, and you, we ain't got to be jealous about it. I got 100% to get. Hey, when it's your time, I can do it. This person's a little more needier. How many of you know the men's the one that need most of love? We're the most neediest around the house, am I? I've seen some of you win. Us men, we are needy. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without you. I know I was wrong. Believing for so long. By the way, this new music is God awful. I'm, I'm helping. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Ain't nothing like that no more. I was listening to the music the other day at the ball field, and it's like, oh, my God, this is horrible stuff. <laughs> Once that I found my wife across the seas. Now she's in a or something like that. I'm like, <laughs> what? Anyway, I'm like, Lord, get me back to the house of God. All right. Anyway, so we don't have to regulate our love. We have an ability to give love out in abundance to people and give money. And some people are needier, so life ain't fair. Y'all got that? So some we hoard, some we regulate, and then look at me here. Listen. Then some people give their love out proportional. What does that mean? It goes back to phileo. They give love out based upon the degree that they give you. And that how it is sometimes in our family. When you love me, I'm going to love you. Here's three, and I match you by giving three. That ain't what God wants for us. When I'm called on the moment, God wants me to learn to give 100%. Romans 5, 1 through 5 says this, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into the grace where which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into what? Our hearts by who? 
the Holy Spirit. One of the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. So look, the Spirit of God who was given for us. Y'all hang on with me. So we don't got to hoard love. We don't got to regulate love. And we, we definitely don't got to give it in proportion. Now, if you're here and you have doubts about your ability to love like this, you're not alone. Don't think that you can go out and live crazy and then wake up every morning and not stop and say, God, I'm crucified to you. And I crucify myself to this world because this world's going to come out after me and I'm going to die to my opinions towards the world. And if you don't learn to do that, you're going to act a fool sometimes, all righty? But the good news is when you stop yourself and recognize God can give you the ability to win with people. Let's go on. I'm, fixing, I'm, fixing, I'm starting on fixing to start winding down. You ever try to text people and try to say fixing? <laughs> you type fix and then E-N-E-N -E -N on it and it don't go in there. And then you're wondering if they even understand fixing. Then you do F-I-X-I-N-G, fixing. That don't sound right, and my brain ain't that smart, so I got to figure out a way to reword that. Can I just call you? Let's look at something right quick. Powerful passage of Scripture if you get it. And again, we're beginning to close out, okay? John 21, verse 15. Now, remember G Peter had denied Jesus. Y'all remember? Peter had denied Jesus three times and Jesus was crucified and Peter was like, my Lord, I'm, I'm just going back fishing. Jesus has died and everything. He's done through in the towel. I, he's dead. I don't know what's going on anymore. Everything I believed in is crazy. I'm going to go back fishing. And all the other disciples said, well, we going with you. And then this story picks up kind of here. Jesus comes up in the morning, early in the morning, and said, hey, guys, y'all caught any fish? And they said, no, we hadn't caught any fish. We've been fishing all night. Jesus, they don't know it's Jesus. And Jesus says, throw your nets on the other side. So they throw the nets on the other side, and they get so many fish that their nets are just full of it. And Peter looks out. He said, that's Jesus. The Scripture says he cloaks himself and didn't even wait. Jumped out in the water and started swimming. And then we pick up this story. Remember, denied him. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? Jesus uses the word agape here. Do you, are you willing to give me 100%? And he said unto them, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he uses the word phileo here. Jesus said, do you willing to give 100%? And Peter turns to him and said, God, you know I'm only able to go 50-50. And he said unto them, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said, then feed my lambs. And he said to him again the second time. Now think about it. He, Peter already knows he's done denied him. And he said to him the second time, Simon, do you love me? This is the word agape. Or do you give me 100%? Do you love me? And he said, Lord, yes, Lord. You know that I, again, you know. You know when times got tough, I left you. You know when I was standing by the fire and them people asked me if I knew you, you knew that I knew and I only followed you. I loved you as long as I loved you as long as my Lord miracles were going on. I loved you as long as things were going great. I loved you when you sent me out and I was casting devils out of people and all that. I, 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 I loved you then, but man, when you left me, and things got tough and I become all alone. You know I only followed you. And he said unto him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said unto him, Tend my sheep. And he said unto him a third time, Simon, 
son of Jonah, do you? And he didn't use agape this time. He uses the word phileo. He said, Simon, do you love me 50-50? And Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, do you love me? And he said unto him, Lord, you knoweth all things that I only phileo you. I've denied you and you know. And then look at this right quick. Peter knew that he had only, fi- had only phileo love. He knew that he had turned his back and denied even knowing Jesus Christ. Jesus knew, listen to me. Jesus knew the power of the Holy Spirit that would soon be coming after the resurrection of the dead. Peter at that time only had 50-50. And some of you, listen to me, some of you, some of you, if you'd be honest, you only got 50-50. Least you're honest. And then look what he said, verse 18. This is a good God. Most assuredly, I say unto you, that when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying the death, that he would glorify God. And when he had spoken these things, he said unto him, follow me. Now, what does that mean here? He knew there would come a point in time. When he had had another opportunity to deny God, this time he said, I wouldn't do it. This time agape poured through him. This time he said, I ain't worthy to be crucified like my Savior, so crucify me upside down. Now, can I tell you something? There's an assurity in your life. There is. There's an assurity in your life. I guess that's how you say the word, assuredly. There is a 100% in your life. You have the ability. You have, may have denied. You may have messed up. You may have quit. You may have been your whole life. You live 50 feet because you protect yourself. I, I can't give you everything because, man, what if you don't love me back? So you hoard your love. Some of you regulated your love. Some of you what not ability. You give it proportional. In other words, if you love me, you've done all that. And God has said, you know what I got for you? I got some maturity coming at you. I've got some ability in you to learn to give 100% to people whether you know it. Or not. And when that happens, you'll begin to follow Jesus. First Corinthians twelve fifteen says it this way. And I will very this is Paul. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for your souls. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I am loved. Are you at a place in your life when it comes to dealing with people that you're willing to be to spend and to be spent? It's pretty tough, ain't it? Look, he says, I loved you, and that same love ain't coming back at me. I can't, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I can do it all the time. But that's what Jesus has called us to do. In fact, when we only choose to give 50, when somebody else is giving 50, and we're walking in Phileo love, we're going contrary to what Scripture teaches. It's not God's best. If I've learned anything through the years, I'm finding out what this happens in this situation in your life, God's got something right around the corner.
I guess the older I get, I'm learning there is a sovereignty of God. There, there's a little bit of God. God knows. And even though you can make your choices and your decisions in the midst of this, God knows. Nothing catches him off guard. He can make something good come out of any evil situation that you're in. God can turn it around. Whatever somebody's meaning for harm, if you will choose to give 100%, God's got something right around the corner. I guess what we've got to do is just be honest. I don't know if I can give 100%. How about you, young people? Could you think 100%? It's tough, ain't it? What about when that old dad's acting kind of crazy? Are we willing to submit ourselves to give 100% back? When our mamas are treating us wrong, are we able to do that? Or our coach is doing it, or our teacher is doing it, or your boss is doing it? The same love that God asked Brother Damon to have is the same love he asked for you to do. Being willing to give 100%. Showing mercy when mercy's needed. Showing love when love's needed. Be willing to do that even if they can't give in return. Now that's a tough one. If I was to do an altar call right now, we all should be on the floor up here bawling. That he asks us to do this, and we don't know if we can. So, in closing, do you hoard your love? I just want you to stop a second. You can turn on some low, low music if you don't mind. And we'll work through this. It's, it's 20 till 12. We'll be out of here in just a second. There you go. We exalt, yeah, I can't love. I can't love. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> Do you hoard your love? I want you to think about that. Where you are, do you hoard your love? I can't let that person love other people because I need that love. So you hoard them. I can't have too many friends because if I have too many friends, that's just, I only got a hundred pieces to shed if we... We have too many friends and I won't have enough love. In fact, it ain't fair, Jesus, that you would ask me to love my enemies and bless those who curse me. Do you regulate your love? Do you try to treat everybody fair? Kids, do you get mad when it seems like your parents are showing them more love than they're showing me love? Life ain't always fair. I laugh. Y'all don't mind hanging with me. When Haley got 15 or old enough, 16 to drive a vehicle, I bought her a four-door Grand Prix. Because this is what come in at the time. Well, when Hillary got 16, I got her an XR8. It's a nice sports car. I mean, the doors open, did this. I didn't love it anymore. They all both were the same price. Just this is looked. Well, guess one outlasted the four-door Grand Prix, baby. That thing was still rolling. In fact, we sold it to somebody else, all righty. That four-door, you know what I mean? So it might look unproportional. It wasn't. It might have looked unfair, but it wasn't. It was, it was what was going on at the time. So love sometimes, is some, sometimes our love can't be regulated. It's, this one gets a little more this time or whatever. And then last... Or is your love proportional? The goodness is, is this. Good news. If you don't, you don't have to fear giving love. You hear me? I'm closing with this and then one more scripture and we're out of here. You don't have to fear giving love. Listen to this scripture. 1 John 4, 18, there's no fear in love, but perfect love, mature love, that's what perfect means, mature love, 
cast out fear. Mature love says, I'm going to give you 100% whether you give me anything back. Immature love says, I'm going to give you 50%. Erotic love says, I want it all on me. I'm the man. Perfect love cast out whether I'm going to get anything back or not. Because fear involves, look at it, torment. Ain't that really the real problem with hoarding love and regulating love? There's fear. It's fear. You know, I only got so much. I, and look at it says, fear involves torment. But he who fear has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Wow. How do you end that one, Brother Rayford? If you have fear of just learning to give it all to everybody, then you hadn't come to a place in your life. I'm not saying that you're not a Christian. I'm just saying you hadn't come to a place in your life that you've come to understand the agape love that God has for you. In other words, He loves you when you only give Him 50%. That's what he did with Peter, right? Today you may only give him 20%, but guess what? He's still coming at you 100%. I blew it today, 100. <laughs> he mad, I ain't puffed up, 100. You get, that's, that's pretty, 100 at you, 100. I messed 100. And we hope in closing, we know that it's the Spirit of God that helps us to do that, right? There's no way. I don't wake up in the morning. I wake up in the morning trusting in the Holy Spirit. Because if I trust in myself, I may only have 10% today, so back off. <laughs> Ten's all I got until I go get with Jesus and drink some coffee. That's what my wife told me this week. I was playing around her. I love her. I love you. I love you. She said, Stop it. I ain't drank my coffee this morning. <laughs> hey, and if you don't mind, stand up. So here we go. 32 years. And look at me. I promise you, I phileoed her and our heiress erotic love for a lot of years. That's the honest God truth. For a lot of years. For probably more than most of our marriage. But later in life, it's learn to agape each other can you be patient with each other while we learn to agape with each other this child I tell her all the time what well, you don't like my preaching because she agapes your children when that starts happening and flowing through you you're willing to feed my sheep and you remember almost 20 years ago a guy jumped up and gave her a word of knowledge and told her almost 20 years ago, feed, God said to feed my sheep. So how can I get mad at her back here feeding sheep? She's doing what God's called her to do. Giving her an agape love for children that's out there. That's what he can do for you. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Praise God. I would say everybody come by and grab you a piece of love batteries. Them things cost too much money. I'm sorry, I ain't got enough of that love flowing out of me right now, okay? But you do. Amen. Why don't you stand up right quick? When you're standing up, high five somebody next to you. Huh? Say, I don't know if I got that much love, but if the Holy Spirit helps me, I can. Amen. Lord, I pray that you bless and keep your people. Make your face shine upon them. Be gracious to them. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.